Hello everyone. Uh, for the next 10-15 minutes, we will be discussing about the use and abuse of the limb reconstruction system. The objective of this lecture is to uh, discuss about when to use a limb reconstruction system and when not to use a limb reconstruction system. The principles that are governing the use of an LRS, which I think has already been discussed because it's a device which works on Elizero principles. The clinical different clinical situations where it can be used and where the use is likely to uh, take you or, or you are likely to end up with problems if you use in certain situations and how to minimize the complications while a knowledge of thorough knowledge of these things help you to minimize complications when you use a limb reconstruction system. So when you compare a limb reconstruction system with a ring fixator, both has its own role in reconstructive surgery. It works on the same principles. A ring can be a substitute for LRS, but uh, not vice versa, because there are many situations in which where you can use a ring, but you cannot use a limb reconstruction system. It's a simple uh, but less forgiving implant, which ideally can be used for less complex situations. Theoretically, it's possible to use LRS in very complicated situations, but personally, I would restrict use of LRS to less complex situations. And in more complex situations, I would prefer to use a ring fixator. So why an LRS? Because it's a monolateral fixator, which works on L0 principles. It's easy and it can be applied very fast. It's much easier in specific situations, which and gives comparable stability uh, with respect to a ring fixator. But always remember that it is less forgiving. It's a modular system. The learning curve is short. Compared to uh, Elizero fixator, learning curve is short. It's better tolerated by the patient. But because of that, there are situations where limb reconstruction system is misused. When does that happen? When you extend the indications, when you violate the principles, and when you use it in situations as a substitute for a ring fixator. So these are mainly the situations where we which we come across where you see that LRS is being misused. So what are the indications for a limb reconstruction system? It can be used for acute fractures can be used for non-unions, lengthenings, transport, and deformity correction. You can use it for uh, uniplanar deformity correction. You can use it for oblique plane deformities and periarticular deformities. Also, in certain situations, it can be used. So where do we use an LRS? In, in all those before mentioned situations, where can we use an LRS? You can use an LRS when the fragments are large enough so that a clamp can be accommodated and in each clamp pin seats Y1 and 5 can be utilized for screw placement. One and four is also sort of okay, but less than that, one and three and all are not acceptable. So you should be, the fragment should be long enough so that the pins can be put in pin seats one and five. Situations where you will have to use a flap at later date, because compared to ring, if you have a monolateral fixator, application of flap is going to be easy. Bone quality is good and your expertise with ring is less, but not as a substitute, but there are situations where LRS will help you to uh, tide over the situation. So I'll be showing you a few situations where I have used an LRS. There are situations where LRS was, uh, I had landed up in problems uh, by using an LRS. And there are certain cases which had come to me after failed LRS. So fracture situations this is a compound fracture. So he had a badly crushed and contaminated foot injury. The fragments were large enough, initially treated by an AO fixator. It's a transverse fracture. So after a week, I converted it into LRS. Uh, did fibular resection so that I can compress the fracture site. It was compressed. It's a transverse fracture, so compression was easy. And that's the follow-up. The fracture united without any situation. So this is this is one of those ideal situations where you can use an LRS, where you can compress a transverse fracture. The fragments are large enough. Fracture situation again. This was again one of my uh, cases. It's a compound fracture tibia. Uh, actually, there was a little bit of lack of planning because one of the most important things is when you do an LRS, the instrumentation should be perfect. In this particular situation, my drill bits were old, so I had to uh, use large amount of force to drill and finally what happened is there was a lot of heat necrosis and recurrent pin tract infections. Even though the immediate post-operative x-ray was looking good, uh, this was what happened. The fixator got loose, though fracture united, it united with a deformity. So whenever one of my suggestions is whenever you are doing an LRS or a fixator, ring fixator, always uh, use fresh drill bits. Fracture situation, this is an oblique fracture line. So when you put on an LRS and compress it, what happens is the fracture will translate. So in such situations, nowadays, I would prefer to use a ring rather than an LRS. So can this situation be managed with an LRS? Yes. If you have an oblique fracture line, one of the ways by, by which you can use an LRS is to 
telescope the fragments so that when you telescope the fragments, there is some amount of internal stability there. And then an LRS can be used to compress the fracture. So that's the follow-up. Luckily, this united, but in oblique fracture situations, if you want to compress, either telescope it or you go for ring fixator if you want to use a fixator. So this is one of the cases which came to me. Uh, this is a fracture situation. Uh, which was treated by an LRS and you can see that there is one clamp with pins across the fracture site here. There is a fracture here, one pin of the clamp is on one side of the fracture and the other is on the opposite side. So this is one situation where an LRS which is not going to work. So this is purely a violation of the principle. And after a few days, the surgeon had removed the clamp and did a compression. But now what you see is the stability is being compromised. There is only two uh, screws on clamp on either side, one clamp on the proximal fragment, another on the distal fragment and two uh, uh, pins on each. And you can see that he has developed a fracture lower down also. And finally, what happened is the entire fragment got sequestrated out. So now he was walking with a hypertrophied fibula. You can see that there is a proximal uh, tibia fibular synostosis and he was walking with varus. So what was the solution? I applied an LRS and uh, made him bear weight and did a fibular osteotomy and corrected the deformity. So the fibula now united, it's a hypertrophic fibula. We achieved a distal uh, a fusion of the distal tibia fibular joint also. We did all this with an LRS. And this is how he is uh, walking prior to surgery. And the second video shows how he's walking after surgery. So before surgery, you can see that his gait is abnormal, a little bit of trembling the gait is there. And after surgery, the gait is pretty normal. That's how he is walking. Uh, a non-union situation. This is a 28-year-old male with a compound fracture of the femur treated by nail. It got infected and the organism was MRSA. We did an implant removal, debrided and put an antibiotic nail. So for, when, when you are dealing with an infection situation, uh, the, this, this already might have been discussed. Uh, the, the primary importance is for the debridement. It's not the fixator that controls or the corticotomy that controls infection. It's your debridement which does the trick. So infection should be controlled by debridement. And once the infection was controlled, you can see that the, he started throwing new bone. There is a lot of new bone formation around the fracture site. So here, what we did is for femur, it's always LRS is better tolerated by the patient compared to a ring fixator. So in femur situations, we try to use LRS wherever possible. The fragment length was good enough. So we did the telescoping of the fragments and did the compression. Translated the fragments a little bit and compressed it. Here you can see that this is translated and the proximal fragment is telescoped into the distal fragment and it united without much of an issue. And that's the final result. Fragment length is very, very important when you uh, put in an LRS. This is a case of a failed LRS, which was referred to me. You can see that the proximal fragment is very short and you can see that there are a couple of pin tracks there. So what has happened is the stability was compromised and this ended up as a hypertrophic non-union. You can see that there is callus formation there. So here, what we did was we applied a ring fixator and using a six-axis system, just distracted and corrected the deformity. And he started throwing new bone and the fracture united without any issues. We didn't open the fracture site. We didn't do any bone grafting there. So stability is very, very important. So if the fragment size is short, it is always better to go for a ring fixator rather than going for a uh, LRS. Bone transport. This is again, you can see that the middle clamp has only two pins, but middle clamp, middle fragment is one which the muscle pull is very, very less. So stability can be a little bit uh, you can get adequate stability with two pins itself. So you can see a corticotomy here. The bone is being transported and it united without much of an issue. This is a case from uh, CLLR, Mangal Sir's case. Lengthening. Uh, I restrict my use for to LRS uh, for LRS in, in cases of simple lengthening where there is much, where there is no much of a deformity. The osteotomy level, you can see that this is not a metaphyseal osteotomy. This is a diaphyseal osteotomy. And osteotomy level is guided by the fixation points. It's not necessary that every time you do a metaphyseal osteotomy. So stability of the fixator is most important. And after once you put a stable fixator, the level of the osteotomy is decided by the uh, position of the pins. And never compromise on the stability. And you can see that the pins are in the one in pin seats one, three, and five. 
So this is one case where the LARS is being misused. You can see that osteotomy is done at the metaphysis, compromising the stability of the fixation of the proximal fragment. So what happened is immediately there is a deformity at the proximal fracture site, or proximal osteotomy site. Same situation, but done in a better way. Uh, you have three pins here in the proximal fragment and uh, uh, the osteotomy level is decided by the level of the pins. So here it's a stable fixation, so there is no deformity on doing a corticotomy. Uniplanar deformity correction, this is a varus femur in a 29 year old male. Uh, here you will not be able to use the templates. So we put pins perpendicular to each fragment without using template, uh, do an osteotomy and correct it. Uh, here I had a complication. There was a splinter at the osteotomy, but it was not affecting the stability of the fixation. And it united uneventfully. There is a little bit of uh, translation you can see on the uh, lateral view. That is because we are pu putting the pins freehand. That's not of much clinical significance. And that's the final result. Uh, deformity correction in an oblique plane. This is an 18-year-old girl uh, with bilateral varus femur. Left is more deformed, right has less deformity. These sort of cases you need to attempt only once you have gained adequate experience with simpler cases. And the right side deformity was less, so we did a, a osteotomy through the resolution cora with pins perpendicular to the proximal and distal fragment. And the left side, since the deformity was more, we decided to do two osteotomies with three clamps. And in, you can see that in every clamp, the pins are in the pin seats one and five. The osteotomy might look a bit close to these pins, but if you do carefully a percutaneous osteotomy, putting adequate number of drill holes, doing such osteotomies is not a big issue. It takes a little bit of time, but you can do it pretty well. And that's the final result. On the left side, she had a stress fracture of the proximal osteotomy side, so I had to slide in a plate, locking plate, and fix it. So the take-home message is LRS is uh, a relatively simpler implant, but restrict its use to relatively simple situations. It has a definite learning curve, though less than that of a ring fixator. It has a definite learning curve. It's a less forgiving implant, so decision-making is very important. Where to use an LRS and where to use a ring. This is the decision-making point that you should be very careful about. And it's not a substitute for ring fixators and never violate principles while you do an LRS. Thank you very much.